Hello and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Elise. Today I have a one layer scene card to show you. Let's take a closer look at the project. Here is the card that we're going to be making today. It is really cute and features these bug images from the Inkbot shop. So I started out by um, trying to arrange and figure out how I wanted to arrange my images on my card panel. So that is a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of Nina Solar White 110 pound. And I'm just taking some of these little bugs and some of the accessories like the mason jar and trying to figure out how I want my scene to look. All in all, this probably took me um, about five minutes just laying it out, but I'm going to jump ahead and this is actually a little bit sped up. Now I will say this um, stamp set has a lot of different little bug images and technically only one of them is a firefly, but that's okay. I colored a few of the other ones to look like fireflies too, although I think one of them is a dragonfly and the other one might be a butterfly. But in the end, I still think that this looks cute and it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just a card. So um, I am going to go ahead and stamp this down with the Hero Arts Intense Black ink because I am going to Copic color these images. And that is a alcohol marker friendly ink. Just going to go ahead and press that down. And then I do end up stamping it a second time just to be sure I get really dark black lines. Once I have that down, um, I'm going to take out that panel and put in a piece of Gina K masking magic paper so that I can create some little masks for these um, bugs. There are no dyes for this set, so I thought this was a perfect um, chance to do a one layer card, which I rarely ever do, especially not a one layer scene card. So to save you all from watching me awkwardly fussy cut for what seemed like an eternity, but was probably only 10 minutes, I cut that out of the video and now you can see my little masks and I'm just going to put these on top of my images. And then we can move on to the ink blending. So for the grass, I've got this um, Lawn Fawn grass stencil. They came out with these um, pretty recently. And just going ahead and using a mowed lawn. And then I'm also going to use Lucky Clover. Clearly on my mode lawn, there was some dark blue on that um, foam, the, my blending foam, but in the end it gets blended out just fine. Also, I'm really used to blending on Bristol smooth paper and I can see, like seriously see the difference and feel the difference when I'm blending. Um, the Bristol smooth is just so much smoother, but I wanted to cope with color, so I needed to use Nina. So now I've shifted that stencil so that it is protecting the grass and I'm going in with some chip sapphire. Now I will say there's the first time this happens. Um, I clearly need to be a less aggressive blender because I um, ended up needing to put down some purple tape. I did use that pixie spray on the back of this stencil, but I'm afraid of maybe I just didn't use enough. See, and there it happens again, where clearly I just need to blend less aggressively because this comes back to bite me again shortly. I'm going with Seedless Preserves and I'm going to move one of my little bugs. Yep. And I get ink where I'm not supposed to get ink. So blend less aggressively. See, there he goes. He goes flying around. Um, blend less aggressively than I do. And then I also have that spot with the foam because I'm not using Bristol Smooth Paper. This little section of video is painful to watch back. Um, so tips, maybe use zigs for this if you are not a um, as confident in your blending on Nina paper. So that way you don't have to use alcohol markers and um, blend less aggressively. Those are tips for me for next time and maybe those will help you as well. So I'm uh, now I've got this kind of scene all blended out and I am just going to use um, water, clean, clear water from um, my Tim Holtz dis Distress Sprayer. I have such a hard time saying that. Um, to just make a few little water droplets on this background. I'm going to let those sit for just a second and then you can see that oxidation effect that you get with Distress Oxide inks, which I love. Kind of a random pattern too, which I find really fun. Now I have um, peeled off my masks and you can see that little bug on the top. 
is a little bit sad. Got a little bit of purple on his face and in his eyes. But I do um, make this work. It's not perfect. But I say this all the time. We're handmade, not homework. I think our cards can be a little bit imperfect. Like I said, they're handmade. I think it's fine. Anyways, plus, if we're being honest, the recipient, unless you're giving it to a crafty friend, is never going to look at those and realize it. They're going to look at this and be like, oh my gosh, you made me a card. And that's so cool. So um, I am just going in with some Copic coloring. I am coloring all of the bodies of these gray, um, the little eyes blue, the wings a very light blue, and just a little bit of the end of their bodies yellow because I wanted these to be fireflies. Now, I guess it's kind of controversial. Do you say lightning, bug, or fireflies? Technically, um, so I grew up in Southern California, and there were none that I ever saw. And I currently live in North Texas, and there are none that I've ever seen here. Um, but my husband grew up in the Kansas City area, and um, his parents now live here. But when they still lived in Kansas City, um, we would go visit them in the summer, we would always see them and it was so much fun because I had never seen them before. So let me know if where you live, you get to see fireflies or lightning bugs and let me know what you call them. I wonder if it's like a reach. It must be a regional thing. Um, but yeah, I'd just be interested to know down in the comments. So I'm just going through, like I said, doing my coloring. This is really nothing fancy Copic coloring. I'm not a fancy Copic color. Um, I color darkest to lightest. I rarely go back through, try to get as smooth of a blend as I can and go from there. So here you can see I am coloring that last little bug um, and trying to do my best to cover up that purple um, that I accidentally blended on. And I am just going to make his face a little bit darker than the other bugs to cover this up. And his eyes a little bit darker as well. I mean, it really, it's the best that I could do in this situation, honestly. Um, and in the end, he still kind of looks a little bit purple, but it really is fine, you guys. So just going through and doing my coloring. And once I color the bugs, I need to color the inside of the jar so that it blends into the background. I guess um, you could, when you um, did your masking, you could just mask the top of the jar and the bug inside of the jar and leave the body of the jar um, unmasked so that you could color um, in, in with your oxide blending. Here I'm just testing um, which colors I think are the best matches from my Copic colors to get this background close and um, I think I hit it as close as I could have. So I am just coloring the lid of the jar with the same grays that I colored the bodies of my bugs in and then I will move on to doing the background. I'm just trying to get the grass flicks to be um, as close as I can. Also, I do try to fix a little bit that um, blue ink that came in on my grass for my aggressive blending. Now I'm just going in with my blue, trying to make these blend together is a little bit difficult because obviously none of these are even the same colors. The two purples are um, in the same color family, so that's a little bit easy, but it's hard to blend the blue with the purple. And on some level, I kind of wish I hadn't done these harsh lines, because if you look really, really closely in the end, you can kind of see them, but it is what it is. I think um, in the end, especially with the glaze over the entire jar, this that really smoothed out the blending and it's in person really um, not noticeable at all. So just gonna go in and finish that coloring. And then that finishes all of the coloring that needs to get done for this card.
Just going to try to smooth out that grass just a little bit more and make those peaks a little bit taller to match the stencil. And then we will move on to stamping the sentiment. So I thought this, we're all just winging it, was so perfect for the world right now because really truly we're all just winging it. So using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink on top of that um, Distress Oxide stamping, just going to quick stamp that twice. And then I'm going to add some little accents. I've just got a little acrylic block here. It's just honestly easier than using my Misty. And going to add um, a little flight trail to the end of one of those little bugs. And then on the top right, that bug that really is a lightning bug. I'm just going to add a little glow to his behind. I thought that was really cute. And just adds a little bit more to round out the scene. Now I'm just going to adhere my um, card panel here to an A2 folded card base, which is also made with Nina 110 pound. Get that all lined up. And then we can move on to final elements. So I've got that um, bottle of Nouveau Glaze. And at first I thought I would just do their eyes. Um, off camera, I end up doing the entire jar. And you can see that in the final photos here um, in about a minute. But, um, and, I, and I also do their wings. I love this product. It's my favorite kind of glossy, clear product. Um, I find it really easy to spread and to squeeze. I highly, highly recommend it if you struggle with glossy accents um, like I did. This product works just so much better for me. The jar is very large um, and it lasts you a really long time. This is my first bottle, but I've ordered a second on standby because I don't want to run out. I also used some tonic. These are the jewel drops that dry translucent with a hint of color. This is the lemon cello color. And I'm just using that on their little glowy behinds. And that completes the card for today. I hope that you enjoyed this. A little out of, um, not quite what I normally do, but I had so much fun creating this card. If you liked watching this video, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel to see more. There's also some other videos on the screen if you want to watch more from me, and I'll catch you in the next one.